Fiberglass boat means fiberglass projects. And how do you do it? It's actually fairly simple. Hi, I'm Nico Waters and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast, your podcast source for all kinds of cruising stories, advice, inspiration, and answers to the questions that you've got. This episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Rainman Watermakers and SeaTask. Rainman Watermakers and Desalination Systems are capable of producing up to 37 gallons of fresh, clean drinking water per hour from seawater without the need for installation. Configurations are available in AC, 12 volt DC, and even a gasoline system. SeaTask is the premier U.S. facility for Rainman Watermakers here in the USA. Visit them at www.seataskgroup.com to learn more. Add the referral code BOATGALLEY in the Order My System page to receive 10 extra pre-filters with your order, a $70 value. Slow down, slow down. A fiberglass boat is the most wonderful thing in the world to work on because anytime you add something to it, essentially you're reinforcing the hull. The one caveat, and this is kind of a big one, is that the glass part of fiberglass, that's exactly what it is. Fiberglass is just, it's like they've taken glass fibers, tiny, tiny little slivers of tiny little glass, and made it into some kind of a cloth. And you have to watch out for minute, tiny slivers of glass everywhere. Yeah, it looks like material, it's actually made out of glass. And you better use gloves. The thing with fiberglass is there's some real basics that make it workable kind of anywhere you are. And to work with the fiberglass, First of all, you have to have some of that awesome cloth that I was talking about. And then you have to have something that's going to turn that material looking thing into the stuff that your boat looks like. And the glue of choice for most people these days is epoxy and specifically West System. There might be some other stuff, but I don't know. We on our boat, we use West Systems, which is West System, which is made by Gudgeon Brothers exclusively. And it's a two-part epoxy, and it really is fantastic. You're going to need a resin and a hardener. Basically, they're two chemical things, and they form a chemical reaction, and they kick off together. But what's great about that is that pretty much they stay inert as long as they're kept apart from each other. You do have to be super careful with the ratios. And I'm not going to give you the details of that because there are a number of different hardeners and a number of different resins. And the amount of time and the amount of space that you, the amount of, each one that you need. They depend on the temperatures that you're dealing with and kind of how long you want it to be workable. So this is one of those things you will have to think, read the instructions pretty carefully in terms of the details of the specific resin and hardener that you're working with. How you apply it though, it's pretty similar. And step number one, clean the area you're going to work on. So we are currently doing a project where we're building a new bunk for ourselves in the main salon, which has involved roughing up the fiberglass to add some tabbing to put some beautiful wood strips along the hull. Before we did any fiberglassing to the hull, we cleaned off the hull by sanding or lightly grinding what we were dealing with. And yes, you're dealing with glass fibers, so wear respiratory protection. And then we wiped it all down with MEK which is a particularly toxic solvent, that it's a really, really great degreaser. And I wanted to make sure, we wanted to make sure that the fiberglass, the resin, and the epoxy actually stuck to the hull that was there. We wanted to make sure, and we did have good ventilation going. We wore gloves and skin protection, and definitely that respiration protection. The second step, you wanna cut the fiberglass to the right size. It sounds kind of funny to say you're going to cut the fiberglass, but again, it, it's a material. You will see that it's a material. This particular project, we were using fiberglass tape, which comes in widths. Ours was about four inches. Uh, you can also get fiberglass cloth or fiberglass matting. And again, the product that you choose is going to depend on the project that you're doing. For us, this is exactly what we were dealing with. Number three, you want to prep your epoxy. You have to do the ratios the right way, and the epoxy, again, is resin and hardener, and you want to do whatever it tells you you're going to use. West System actually sells pumps that specifically dispense the exact amount, and they have a pump that's for the resin and a pump that's for the hardener, and it makes it 
pretty bulletproof in terms of making sure you're getting the right amount of each one in there. I will also say that you want to make sure that you're using and you're you're putting together just the right amount of stuff. Don't mix up a whole lot more than you think you're going to use. It's much better to go through a lot of small batches and not overuse it because once those two chemicals start to come together, they start to kick off, the chemical reactions happen, and you're, it would really be a waste because resin and hardener is ridiculously expensive. It would be a terrible waste if you mixed a whole lot thinking that you were going to mix up exactly the whole amount that you needed for your entire project and you realized that three quarters of it you had to throw away because it kicked off and got hard and solid before you could actually get to use it. It's a whole lot better to make smaller quantities and have to make them more often. Number four, you're going to wet out the area that you're fiberglassing. And all that means is that you're going to paint the epoxy onto the hull. And then you press number five, you're pressing the glass onto the wetted surface. It will stick and really press it down. We actually use, you, there are rollers that you can get that are specifically made for trying to press the fiberglass cloth into the epoxy that's on the wetted surface. And then you're adding a little bit more epoxy to it just to make sure that the whole gla the whole material area is nice and wetted completely through with epoxy. You wet out the area that you're fiberglassing, you're pressing the glass onto the wetted surface, you're going to add another layer of epoxy and really wet the glass down, and then you press on another layer of the glass material. You're not waiting for anything to kick off or get hard or get dry. You're trying to bond the layers of the glass material, the fiberglass, together. And if you wait for it all to kick off, you're going to have to start the whole process again. And remember that step one was to clean the area, which included grinding or sanding it down. Nope, really, just make as many layers as you want with that, with that fiberglass. Press or squeegee the fiberglass material out so there are no voids or no like air bubbles. And sometimes this gets tough because the glass material, it likes to stretch and move around. And as you're pressing it with your the squeegee or even a finger, you and the finger, remember, you've got gloves on, the uh, it likes to stretch and warp and move around. And the edges of that fiberglass material, they shed fiberglass fibers like total crazy. And remember, you're wearing gloves and it's getting super sticky and it's getting hot <laughs> and all that stuff that's going on. So you want to do two or three layers of glass. You don't need to do more than that. And we generally like to cut our layers of glass so that each successive layer of material is a little bit wider than the one that was before it. So you're making a, you're kind of building out a whole layer of it and not having it have this super sharp edge that comes up. And then after you've done that, and remember you're wetting it out and you're really squeegeeing it out to try to, to get that all set, then you let it cure fully. We generally allow it to go overnight, even if it feels like it's hard and it's not hot anymore. But that's it. It's just six basic steps to fiberglass work. Like a lot of my projects that we talk about in these basics, there's some work that you have to do ahead of time. You're going to have to figure out what kind of resin and hardener you need. And to do that, you're going to look at what the outside temperature is and what you're actually trying to do. You may decide that you have some filling because you want the epoxy to be thicker than if you were just doing plain old fiberglass work. There's some times that we like to fill it to make it smoother uh, and, and fill it up a little bit. But the steps, the six steps that you're dealing with are you've got to clean out the area that you're working with. So you're going to sand or grind to make the new fiberglass and epoxy stick to what it is that you're working on. And then you're going to wipe it down with some kind of solvent to degrease. You're going to, step number two, you cut the fiberglass to the right lengths. And it's a lot easier to be doing this before your fingers are sticky with resin and before you're worried about the hardener and resin epoxy kicking off. You want to cut your pieces of fiber of material before you start doing any of the other stuff. The third thing you're going to do is prep your epoxy and get it ready. Make sure you are doing multiple small batches instead of one great big one and make sure your ratios are correct. 
You're then going to wet out the area that you're fiberglassing, press your glass material onto the wetted surface, and really, really press it down. You might want to squeegee it in to get it in there, and then you're adding another layer of epoxy to get it really, 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 really wet. And then you're pressing on another layer of glass. You can repeat that a couple times if you want to. If you're filling in a blister that's on the hull, you're probably going to do it. I think we did on some of ours, we did 10 or 15 layers of fiberglass material getting successively bigger each time. And that's it. You're going to let it fully cure overnight before you do whatever it is you're going to do next. And you have just strengthened the hull while you are doing some wonderful projects for your own boat. Yay! Uh, one other little thing. Uh, if you've mixed the epoxy in a plastic tub, you can clean out the epoxy pretty well with a paper towel and then let it finish hardening in the plastic tub. It's kind of fun because the leftover epoxy will kick off and you can like um, squeeze your plastic container a little bit to loosen the skin of epoxy and then just pull it off. Sort of like when you were a kid and you stuck your finger in a candle wax and you pulled it off and then you pulled the wax off and you had a little piece. Anyway, you can do the same sort of thing with epoxy. And that's it. Those are the basics of fiberglass work. It's really cool to learn how to work on your own boat. Can't wait to see you out there. Thanks for listening. And thanks again to our sponsor, Rainman Watermakers and Desalination Systems. If you like the show, please be sure to subscribe in your podcast app. Just search for the Boat Galley Podcast. And reviews are always appreciated. Until next time, then. Slow down, slow down.